In this video, I want to discuss how stress depletes essential vitamins and minerals from our bodies. Everyone knows how stress makes you fatigued and messes with your sleep or can give you headaches. But it also makes you lose all kinds of nutrients, which can lead to deficiencies that you need to fix in order to regain your ability to deal with stress. Understanding what exactly is going on in your body when you're stressed will help you optimize your diet and supplements and fix many of the symptoms associated with stress. To start off, we need to keep one thing in mind. Not all stress is created equal. Acute stress, like being late for a meeting, affects your body very differently than long-term chronic stress. So dealing with a short five-minute stress spike is completely different from dragging yourself through a year-long stretch of constant worry. And as you will see in a second, both also affect your nutrient levels in very different ways. Let's begin by looking at acute stress and how it impacts your vitamin and mineral levels. Acute stress is what we call your body's fight or flight mode. Again, let's use the example of running late for an important meeting. Basically, what will happen is that your HPA axis, so your body's stress system, gets to work. It will signal to your adrenal glands to release hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, which help you tackle that stress. For this process, your body will both deplete and hold on to specific nutrients for a quick energy boost. One of the first things that will happen is that your adrenal glands spike your sodium. This is done through the adrenal hormone aldosterone, which is released in times of stress. It is a survival mechanism that increases your blood pressure because sodium draws water. Ideally, your potassium levels should also rise somewhat to balance that sodium because sodium and potassium are antagonists. At the same time, your body will start using copper and iron, which are needed for energy-related functions like oxygen transport in the blood. Many people think iron is the main energy mineral, but copper is just as essential because it helps make iron bioavailable. A copper-dependent protein called ceruloplasmin is involved here by helping with iron bioavailability. Next, your body will probably start to lose some calming minerals, like calcium, magnesium, and zinc. It does this because it doesn't want to be too calm in a stressful situation. So you basically pee these nutrients out to prioritize action over relaxation. This is what that looks like on a nutrient test. You can clearly see the high sodium and potassium and the low calcium and magnesium. On top of that, certain vitamins also get used in the process of creating energy, either in the cells like B vitamins or through the functioning of your adrenal glands, like vitamin C. In fact, your adrenal glands have among the highest concentration of vitamin C in all of your organs in your body. Great. With that in mind, how do you support your body during acute stress? It's actually fairly simple, and acute stress isn't that big of a problem in terms of nutrient loss. Basically, you want to make sure that you replenish the calming minerals that your body loses, especially magnesium. Magnesium is a cofactor in over 300 enzymes and body functions, like relaxing your muscles, nervous system, and brain. Many people are borderline magnesium deficient, and refined foods that strip magnesium don't help either. Calcium and zinc usually also need to be replenished because they're lost together with magnesium. When taking calcium supplements, though, you want to make sure that you don't suffer from tissue calcification, which I will explain in a second. Otherwise, you do run the risk of making it worse with supplements. The same applies to the other nutrients that we talked about, like sodium, potassium, copper, iron, vitamin C, and the B vitamins. You want to be very careful with those, because even though they are used during acute stress, that doesn't necessarily mean you need more of them. So if you start supplementing high doses of them, that could actually increase your body's energy production even more and therefore spike your stress even more. So for these nutrients, I would test first and then see if you actually need them. Okay, let's now look at what happens when you're under chronic stress. This is a whole different animal. While acute stress is kind of like a sudden storm, chronic stress is more like a slow steady leak that eventually leads to flooding. The reason for this is that chronic stress can create a downward spiral. The more stressed you are, the fewer calming minerals you have available and the less able you are to manage that stress. This vicious cycle can eventually lead to burnout, where your body is so fatigued 
that your stress response doesn't work right anymore. When this happens, your body will have problems pushing out enough aldosterone to continue to spike sodium and potassium. Therefore, the first sign of chronic stress on a nutrient test are low sodium and potassium values. On top of that, we see another very drastic change, which is that on the test, magnesium and calcium values actually increase. How is that possible? Didn't I just say that both are lost during stress? Well, when you are low in sodium and potassium, your body is also low in its solvent agents. So your body becomes unable to keep other minerals in solution. Magnesium and calcium then start depositing in your tissues, which shows up on a tissue test like a hair analysis. So instead of losing them through your urine, they become biounavailable by leaching out of your blood and depositing in tissue. This is where things get very tricky, because people with chronic stress might actually have too much of that biounavailable magnesium and calcium, but not enough in their blood, since they lack sodium and potassium to keep both in solution. That's why the nutrient levels switch and you suddenly have high values of magnesium and calcium together with low sodium and potassium. Also, when you're always stressed, not only do magnesium and calcium become biounavailable, but copper and iron tend to do the same and they tend to build up in toxic forms. Copper toxicity is very common, especially among chronically stressed people. And like I just explained, stress can lead to a zinc deficiency, which then allows the copper to build up because zinc is needed to keep copper in check. On top of that, copper drives adrenaline. So if you're copper dominant, you will also likely be adrenaline dominant. Okay, how then do you deal with chronic stress from a nutrient perspective? You actually still want to increase calming minerals like magnesium simply to increase your body's resistance to stress. Calcium supplements are often not recommended for chronically stressed people because they almost always have tissue calcification, which calcium supplements can make worse. Sometimes they are needed to balance the magnesium, but that has to be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. You also need to restore your sodium and potassium levels, but the key here is improving adrenal function. Without healthy adrenals, no amount of potassium or sodium supplements will fix the issue, because what retains both nutrients in your body is not necessarily your intake of them, but your adrenal hormones like aldosterone. I talk about how to strengthen adrenal function in a different video. Other nutrients that chronically stressed people need include B vitamins for energy production, zinc to balance copper, and things like selenium and iodine for thyroid function. But please go slow here and see how your body reacts. Chronically stressed people are usually very sensitive to all types of supplements, so if you notice side effects, definitely back off. The longer you are in the burnout stage of stress, the more your body will have accumulated biounavailable nutrients like calcium, copper, and even iron, along with many toxins that stress your liver, like excess estrogen and heavy metals. Great, now that you know the basic nutrient patterns that we see in stressed out people, the key takeaway here is that stress isn't just an emotional state. It has a real physical impact on your body and its nutrient levels. What your body needs broadly depends on whether you are dealing with acute or chronic stress. Acute stress drains certain calming nutrients very fast, while chronic stress can lead to nutrient imbalances and the bioavailability problem that I talked about before. Understanding these dynamics can help you better manage your health, especially when it comes to creating customized diet and supplement plans.